how many folks in the, in the room are educators? And then scientists. Okay, so we have a group here that's interested in high quality information produced in a way that can get to people that need it. And I'm really inspired by these first two speakers because number one, they're really looking at the digital uh, communication stream. And today, if you're gonna get information out to young people, not only the next generation, but the next, next generation, which is the group that I work with, sort of teenagers, that is our, our target, target group. But then I'm looking at next generation to be teaching these uh, uh, young people all about science. So I'd like to start by letting you know that I have a really cool job. <laughs> because I get to interact with the scientists, and the scientists have all this amazing information. When they first tell it to me, I can't quite understand what they're talking about. My job is to translate it for my brain, which is about 14 years, you know, uh, arrested development, and then it works for, for my audience. I get to meet people like Edie, who is a renowned uh, researcher and scientist on bioluminescence. These are the kind of images that we use to attract young minds to the ocean. The program is called Ocean Today. It's a Smithsonian NOAA program. It's a partnership. It's a collaboration. And it started uh, at the Natural History Museum downtown. This is an interactive kiosk. The reason they wanted an interactive kiosk is that they wanted to be able to get fresh information into the museums that, were, that, that would focus on research and science you know, year by year, day by day. And these touch screens give you access to that content. Now, just one year before that, the iPhone was released. So this was a time when an interactive screen was really new and, and really fresh. But the release of this iPhone has been really instrumental into, in the direction that Ocean Today and NOAA Media has, has, has gone. Because if you can't get your content into that digital stream and produce it in a way that, that folks consume it, you're not going to keep their attention. So we have a website uh, that that looks at all the different categories, or the main categories, that NOAA focuses on. And I'm going to show you clips from this website in the next couple minutes. 230 videos. So if you're an educator, if you're a scientist, these videos are vetted by NOAA, reviewed by Smithsonian. They are short, two, two and a half minutes long, and they're high quality. You can go to the website, find the, the, the stories that you want to tell, embedded into your website or your presentation, download it if you need to, and use this content. Because uh, as we heard, it's hard to find content that you know is vetted and know is, is, is accurate, and this content is. You know, I hope you don't get offended Here's a clip. by this, but I am delighted that I've given you a puzzle. Yeah, well, this is why it's exploration. You know, we live for this stuff. We live for the new and the puzzling. Now, this is a program where they record video live in the deep ocean. You can actually go online and watch them and listen to this narration as the scientists are discovering the ocean floor. I encourage you to, uh, to uh, search these videos out on the Ocean Today website. They're incredible. So these are the kind of stories that we tell. Ocean Farmers, I've got a, a, a five-part series called 3D Ocean Farming on the next wave of uh, folks that are focusing on aquaculture. This gentleman has a farm where he's growing kelp so that he can pull carbon out of the air and, and provide new sources of food. The ocean is an incredible resource that, uh, that we really haven't utilized research. Um, NOAA has a huge fleet of ships that actually go out and research the ocean. Uh, we've got a story that we're working on right now where they are putting uh, listening devices all throughout the Gulf of Mexico near the, uh, the horizon spill. And they are, they are gathering data on uh, where the mammals are using this technology and, and close to discovering whether or not the mammals left that area and whether or not they they returned. 
and of course, ocean animals. I mean, I love NASA, and there's amazing things out in space, but when you go down deep into the ocean, you can find creatures that look like aliens. And then there's the fun stuff that are right here on our shores. Uh, we're going to be rolling out a whole series this month. We've got a new program called Ocean Today Every Full Moon on horseshoe crabs. They might look super creepy, but there's a lot more to a horseshoe crab than meets the eye. First off, they're not even crabs. They're actually closer cousins to spiders or scorpions. So, so what we try to do in this content is to really make it fun, capture people's attention, give them the information they need. Sometimes it's very sobering science and then wrap it up with what you can do. This is one of the reasons I love uh, 360.org, is that they have fun with their content, they have fun with their message, and they give folks something to do. Let's see here. If you do happen to be caught in a rip current, stay calm. It won't pull you under. It'll just pull you away from shore. Now this clip actually lasts for seven seconds longer. Uh, but what we've been experimenting with is 15-second clips with messaging. We call it Ocean Chum. Putting it into the Facebook feed, <laughs> right? You get out there, you, 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 you chum your audience, and then you bring them into the longer content that might be two and a half, three minutes long. We had a, 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 a video last year called the Rip Current Survival Guide. It uh, reached 17 million viewers on Facebook because people care about safety. And if you have a safe time at the ocean, then you're more likely to go there more often and more likely to get into conservation. The sanctuary system is a really important um, uh, uh, asset. How many are familiar with the sanctuary system? Okay. Um, these are areas that are uh, specially protected. They're like national parks in the ocean. And these kind of uh, conservation efforts are going a long way in terms of helping certain parts of the ocean regenerate itself. And of course, the amazing phenomena that's underwater. Orange and red flashes in the pitch black. Lava oozes from the cracks and rolls across the ocean floor. Earthquakes rumble and roar as tectonic plates grate against each other. Now, of course, if we don't produce this content and get it out to schools, people don't really know how amazing and incredible the Earth actually is. And once you start learning about all the amazing life out there and how incredible this, this planet is, you're more likely to then protect it. So the new, new program that we've got called Ocean Today, Every Full Moon. One thing we realized is that when we were throwing videos out, people didn't really know when they were available. So now we've got a program, every full moon, we produce a collection of videos, five or six videos over a, around a single topic, and publish it on the full moon. We've got seven collections, Animals of the Ice, all about uh, uh, ice melt and how it's impacting animals, Endangered Ocean, the work that people are doing to save species, Trash Talk, all about marine debris. And we did one on bioluminescence. So that's an example of one of the video chumps that we threw out. And you'll love this one. Nah, that always works. So I'm a big believer in awe and wonder. You have to provide the awe, you have to provide the wonder. And part of my story is that uh, I've realized that doom and gloom just isn't working. And I want to talk about that as I wrap up my talk. This uh, collection is really important. It came out just this last month. It's called Coral Comeback? We've had terrible bleaching events really over the last 30 years, but especially over the last three years, 50% of our, our corals are dead. So um, 
I'm going to leave you with this last clip. And this is an example of how you can give people the information, but don't leave them on the doom and gloom story. Leave them with something that they can aspire to, something that they can believe in. And that's really what Ocean Today uh, is all about. Uh, we're a federal agency. We can't advocate for particular uh, policies, but we can help give people tools and the information they need to make their world better. So I'm going to leave you with this clip. In this series, we will look at all the great benefits corals have to people. Actually, that's not Garbage. what I want to show you. People might say. I'm getting the wrap-up sign. Ah, here it is. Beyond the doom and gloom. Through the last two bleaching events in Hawaii, we were able to go out and mark hundreds of coral colonies on the reef that didn't bleach. These are the strongest players. These are our super athletes of the reef. We bring them into the lab. We train them in our environmental treadmills. We make sure they have the best nutrition and they have offspring that are super corals. And they're super corals because they can potentially face the future that will be warmer and more acidic and survive it. So I want to thank you for your time. I really believe that if we look at the science and we share the information and we get together and work hard and know that we can create the next human adventure, um, we can do it. So thanks for your time. <laughs>